Hi folks, Howard with Raglan Piano Company. I uh, want to show you guys just briefly a uh, mask that we've uh, started producing. This is not really a substitute for an N95. It's just going to be as close as we can get for the uh, perilous times that we're in right now. The filter material here is made from a Filtreat 1900 filter, which is good for catching viruses and bacteria. I do not know to what extent. We're still researching that. Obviously, the better filter material you use here, the better off you're going to be. But this is 1900. It was locally sourced and available. And that's what we've used, uh, at least at this point, for this prototype. Uh, the, the frame of it is made out of cardboard, which is also uh, easily locally sourced. Uh, this strip right here, which uh, both cushions the nose and hides a metal strip uh, used to keep the form of the nose, that's made from a uh, window seal, just ordinary foam self-stick window seal. You see the rubber bands that we have here that's part of the elastic strap. And this is a little adjustment device that we uh, prototyped and then cut out here in our store on our laser equipment, which uh, the, the mask itself, the filter material is laser cut, so is this cardboard frame. That's all laser cut. If you're interested, let me know. I'll send you a CAD file that has all that information. Uh, this little adjustment strap allows you to pull when the rubber band reaches a certain tension. It'll thin out, slip through there, release it. It's back. This is more than tight enough to hold this onto uh, your face around your neck. Uh, upgrades that we've done since the last video includes uh, four-point contacts. We have two straps and then the adjustability. Those are going to be the main differences done here. Briefly, I'm going to show you how we put these together. We cut the cardboard frame on our laser and it's made in two pieces because we can nest and uh, get more uh, quantity out of each piece of cardboard that we cut. We've also been uh, experimenting with foam. Now the reason for two different colors is this is uh, self-adhesive foam and so we know to match dissimilar colors. Uh, that lets us know that we've got a left and a right put together and everything oriented properly. For now, we're gonna focus on the cardboard. This is uh, cheaper and much more readily available. Basically, what we do is we put this together with hide glue here. Just lay these two pieces together. We've got uh, little hash marks in place to show us uh, exactly what uh, order to put them in, except I did it wrong. Okay, new plan. Here we go, folks. Let me, I'm gonna try to put this together the right way this time. This is a one take video. I don't believe in editing and fancy stuff because I don't have time to do that. So here we go. All right, now we're going to do it the right way. Glue these two halves together. See, that's why these are color uncoordinated so we know we've got the two halves proper. Okay, so now th that, that's good. The frame, the frame's good, ready to go right there. Um, at this point, this is the point that we'll go ahead and glue the uh, filter material on that we have also laser cut. And again, we've got CAD files for this. Uh, this is the material. You can cut this out of anything you can get your hands on, but obviously the better the quality, the more it's going to catch and stop. These little tabs you'll see later, these are uh, used to cushion the staple that we use to hold the rubber band uh, to, the, to the frame. So we'll, we'll get to that in a minute here. But basically what we do is we use some glue that we sell. It's a PVA glue. Um, we sell it as Raglan Super Tacky Key Top Glue. Pretty much any PVA glue is gonna do fine. You can use Elmer's glue, you can use wood glue. You can use anything that's basically gonna glue that filter material to whatever frame material you're using. Our case is cardboard and there's a lot of, uh, a lot of wiggle room with the adhesive used. Obviously we wanna get a, a fairly decent coating over the whole thing. We don't want any leaks in the filter, uh, but it does not have to be a thick coating uh, because this material we're gluing is very, very thin. Make sure you get some hair in the, uh... no, I'm kidding, don't do that. Make sure you leave brushes, Roy, that, that leave lots of hair on the, on the workpiece. Let's get those out of there. Okay. Then we're going to take the filter material and what I've typically been doing, let me get rid of this so I don't get glue in the wrong spot. A little bit on this side isn't really going to matter. But I'll start at one corner like this, hold it down, stretch it as best I can, work my way around like this so that I have good 
coverage all the way around. Okay, these little bits here will dry and won't matter. I'm gonna set this aside and switch to a frame that we've already had glued up here so we can keep moving with the video. Okay, at this point, I'm gonna go ahead and attach the nose piece with the metal reinforcement. Again, this is just uh, weather stripping for windows. We've got a metal piece here that we leave a little bit of overhang on the ends and around the edges. Cut it with a razor blade, cut it with whatever you want to. Very, very sticky stuff. This part here doesn't need to be on there. And then we secure this right here to the frame. And then we're gonna staple it in place. I'm gonna straddle that little piece of metal just to help hold everything in. Now, probably not gonna show this on camera, but later on, we're gonna take a small hammer and hammer these down. Okay, so the next step uh, which I've actually already done. I've put some double stick tape from the midpoint over to here. That's gonna help us later close the bottom seam. All right, a little bit of glue. We've got a hash mark right here. Run some hot glue right there. Lap it over. We'll get this way, Roy, where they can see us good. Okay, I'm gonna pinch that down right there and throw a staple on it just to help hold it in place so we can keep moving. All right, now we've got to form uh, what we've been affectionately calling the beak around here. And that's uh, where we push all this in. I'm just reinforcing it from this side with, with, with a couple of fingers, pushing in here, getting this nice and flat in here so that we can lay that down and seam that up right there. Then we're gonna take some hot glue, come right in here, close the rest of that off, kind of paint a little bit right there and bend this down so that Nurses and doctors, and I know you guys, I used to be an EMT, won't be making funny little jokes about how that looks. All righty. Make sure you glue it to the table. All right, there it goes. It's up. And, uh, and there we go. So this closes up the seam where we don't want to get any air bypassing the filtration. All right, next, I'll go ahead and give a little bit of a bend right here just to start getting the overall shape of the mask, and we're gonna attach the elastic. Two clips that we've uh, mentioned earlier. We're gonna take cut rubber bands. Really, the size doesn't matter a whole lot. Just needs to be thick enough that it pinches in these corners here. So that there's a hole there just to make it easier to get it started, and then we slide it over uh, and catch in that little slot right there. So we're gonna make two of those assemblies. And of course, if you were mass producing these, you'd have somebody sitting down doing each preparatory step so that during assembly, there wouldn't be any pausing. So there's, there's another uh, strap made right there. Here's what we're gonna do now. We're gonna lay these across the mask this way. Now, obviously when they're in use, they're gonna go back that way, but this is going to help secure the rubber band in place. We've got tabs here that fold over the rubber band and we're gonna come in with a stapler, hold all that in place and staple it down, okay? And again, we're gonna tap these down in a later operation we don't need to show on camera. Well, I'll show them real quick, Roy. Where's that little hammer at? Okay, <laughs> no hammer. Forget that part, y'all. Hammer those down somewhere later on, you'll be fine. All right, so come back this way right here. I'm gonna do this operation several more times to secure the remaining straps. Okay, that piece is on now. Now we're going to do so with our other strap we made up. Okay, again, facing toward the mask. Sorry guys, I'm not a professional video person. I'm a piano technician in real life. We're gonna staple that up right there, just like that. I'm gonna come around this way. Try to keep the strap as straight as you can. We're gonna lay the rubber band here and staple up our last piece. All right, so, all right. Now, I have also been taking, even though this is sealed further back that way, um, I have been taking a piece of tape just as a little extra insurance 
and taping that down right there. It's, that is not a requirement, it's optional. Makes me feel a little better and that just makes it a little bit more secure. So there's the finished mask. You saw us put it together. Uh, that's the uh, best design I've been able to come up with so far. Uh, obviously, once it's installed, you can pull these and tighten. I guess we'll show that, Roy. Okay. Uh, again, I wish I had somebody else to model this. Okay. It even works pretty good with my beard. I should have done this one first. Okay, these go over the ears. Then I'm going to show you in the back here. I don't have a bald spot back there, do I, Roy? No. Good. If you're lying, I'm going to know. I later. see those tighten up good, don't they? Yeah, they do. Tighten right up. Bing, bang. So there we go, folks. Then you can kind of pinch the nose, uh, get it down. One thing I really like about this design, it does not fog up my glasses. I've had other designs. I'll wear my glasses or safety glasses. Fogs up and I can't see. This makes a tight enough seal with this weather stripping here that it does not do that. So if you have any questions, comments, um, put them in the link below. Uh, you can call me. Uh, most of you that we're making this video for are gonna have my phone number. So feel free to contact me if you have any uh, questions, comments, suggestions. Thanks a lot.